Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is electric potential difference, and we want to know what is meant by the term electric potential difference, and how can one describe the changes that occur in electric potential as a charge traverses a circuit. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the concept of electric potential. I left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. Electric potential is a location-dependent quantity that describes the amount of electric potential energy stored in an electric field in a manner that is independent of the quantity of charge. We can calculate the electric potential, V, by taking the amount of potential energy that an object possesses at a given location and dividing it by the quantity of charge at the, on that object. In other words, V equal potential energy divided by Q, the quantity of charge. Here is a Van de Graaff generator, and on the diagram you see a series of lines that represent varying locations a different distance from the surface of that Van de Graaff generator. We could take any one of these lines and place several charges upon them. The charges could be different amount of charges and therefore would have different amounts of potential energy, but the ratio of potential energy per charge should be the same for each one of these objects. For instance, we could take the outer line in this diagram and place three charges upon them, a charge of Q, 2Q, and 4Q. And what we would notice is that each one of these charges has a different amount of potential energy, but if we took the ratio of the potential energy to charge, it would be the same for each one. 20 to 1, 40 to 2, and 80 to 4 are all the same ratio. They reduce down to 20. The point here being that objects with different amounts of charge would experience different amount of potential energy, but the same electric potential when located at the same location. Let's consider the movement of a positive test charge from location A to location B. Since this movement of the positive test charge is in the direction that goes against the electric field, we know that work must be done by an external force in order to move the test charge from A to B. This means that there would be a gain in potential energy of the test charge in moving from A to B. In fact, the work is equal to this change in potential energy, the PE at B minus the PE at A. Now since electric potential is equal to the amount of potential energy per charge, we can say that this change in potential energy also results in a change in electric potential. There's a difference in electric potential between location B and location A, and that difference in the electric potential, or delta V, is equal to the VB minus the VA. And since VB is equal to the potential energy at B per charge, we can substitute that expression into this equation and do the same for location location A. What we have is that delta V is equal to the difference in electric potential between A and B all over Q, the quantity of charge. Now according to the first equation, the change in potential energy is simply equal to the work. So we can say that the delta V, or difference in electric potential, is equal to the work done upon the charge in moving it from location A to B per the quantity of charge on that test charge. In other words, the delta V is equal to a unit of energy, either delta PE or work divided by a unit of charge. Now let's consider the changes that occur in electric potential as a positive test charge moves through an electric circuit. Let's begin the discussion with the movement of the positive test charge through the battery from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. This movement is against the direction of the electric field and as such work must be done by the battery on the positive test charge to move it from the negative to the positive terminal. This causes that positive test charge to gain electrical potential energy and electric potential such that the location of high highest electric potential is at the positive terminal. Once at the positive terminal, that positive test charge would move through the wires, the light bulb, and the other wire back to the negative terminal. This movement is in the direction of the electric field, and as such, the positive test charge would lose electrical potential energy as it traverses the external circuit. By the time it gets back to the negative terminal, it has the lowest amount of electrical potential energy and electric potential, so the negative terminal is the location of the lowest potential within an electric circuit. Now, electric potential is sometimes referred to as voltage since we measure it in the unit volt, named after the famous Italian scientist by the name of Alejandro Giuseppe Antonio Anastasio Miguel Luigi Alejandro Zanino Filippo Flaminio Volta. 
and I bet his friends probably just called him Alex for short. Now, anyways, this unit volts is what we use to measure the amount of electric potential difference. And so when we have a 12 volt battery, what that tells us is that battery supplies 12 joules of potential energy to any one coulomb of charge that moves from the negative to the positive terminal. This is an electrochemical cell. It says energizer 1.5 volts. And this is a battery. It says energizer 9 volts. And inside of here, are six of these 1.5 volt batteries strung together. If you ever pry it open, you would notice that. Now, whether you call this a battery or a cell, what it is is a source of energy. Let's discuss why we need it in those physics labs that we do in physics class. First of all, what the battery does is it supplies the energy that the circuit requires. And the circuit requires energy because there must be a way to move the positive charge from the low potential energy location to the high potential energy location. We have to move the charge uphill and energy is required to do work on the charge to cause that motion. Once moved uphill it's established an electric potential difference across the two ends of the circuit. The wires and light bulbs and wires that attach to the battery are attached to the two ends of the circuit, the positive and the negative terminal, and have an electric potential difference impressed across it. To understand it a little bit more fully, let's use an analogy of a water park. At the water park, water flows from the top of the slide down to the bottom of the slide. It flows downhill naturally, but the water would stay at the bottom of the slide unless there was some way to move the water back up to the top of the slide. The top is the high potential location, the bottom is the low potential location, and we need a water pump to move the water from the low potential location back up to the high potential location so as to establish this difference in electric potential across the two ends of the, of the water slide. In an analogous manner, that's exactly what the cell does. It uses its energy to pump the charge from the low potential terminal up to the high potential terminal and establish this electric potential difference across, it, across its ends so that the charge can flow like water from the top of the slide to the bottom of the slide. It's often useful to distinguish between the internal and the external circuit. The internal circuit includes the ba battery, the cell, the charge pump, the energy source, whatever you wish to call it, and it's there that energy is supplied to the positive test charge to move it from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. It's there that the positive test charge gains energy and thus electric potential. The external circuit includes the wires and the light bulb, or if there's a motor, it includes the motor, whatever is attached to that positive and negative terminal by the wires. It's there that the positive test charge loses its electric potential, particularly in that light bulb. That electrical potential energy is transformed into light energy, or if it's a motor, into mechanical energy. It's there that there's a tremendous drop in electric potential. Now, it's useful to distinguish between the locations of high and low potential for a positive test charge moving through this circuit. The high potential location is location A, and the low potential location is location, location D. It's location B that's just a little lower in potential than location A, but location C is significantly lower in, in potential than location B. Electric potential diagrams are diagrams that depict the differences or the changes in electric potential for the various locations within a circuit. Here is a simple circuit consisting of a cell, a light bulb, and a couple of wires. The location of highest electric potential is the positive terminal, and the lowest is the negative terminal. I can place letters at these strategic locations and then plot the electric potential on a scale going from 0 to 1.5 volts. I'll place location A at 1.5 volts since that's the location of highest electric potential. And I'll place location D at 0 volts since that's the location of lowest electric potential. I will place B at a location just slightly below A and C at a very low location just slightly above location D. This is an electric potential diagram. And what it shows us is that there's a voltage gain as positive test charge moves to the battery from location D to location A. And there's a large voltage drop as positive test charge moves to the light bulb and its electric potential energy is converted to light energy and thermal energy. 
Here is a more complex circuit consisting of two bulbs and a 6 volt battery. Because it's a 6 volt battery, when I do my electric potential diagram, I'll use the scale with 0 volts as the lowest electric potential for location F, and 6 volts being the highest electric potential for the positive terminal location A. And as I construct my diagram, I'm going to show two significant drops. The drop in electric potential for charge passing from location B to location C, and for charge passing from location D to location E. My resulting diagram will look like this. What we see here are there are two voltage drops for the light bulbs and one voltage gain for charge passing through the battery. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could I ask you to help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll see on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission, always a great workout, a concept builder, and a tutorial page. Any one of these could help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.